So I wanted to jump on here. I just finished working out and it reminded me of what I do to keep my satisfaction at a high level and my psychological well-being at a high level. And I just finished a blog post. It's not out yet, but I'll, I'll be posting it shortly. And it's about how to make employees happier and how to make employees more productive. And I find it interesting that I have to kind of go into the research and, and relay this information to business owners or people in general. And in the blog, I start off talking about how organizations and why organizations should focus on the employee's satisfaction. And I mean satisfaction from a, a full scope. So not just job satisfaction, but also life satisfaction. And I feel like organizations really miss the point and they don't take the time to find out ways they can improve their employee's life. And I think Simon Sinek has said it multiple times, but, and, and maybe uh, Laszlo Bach, who used to be the people operations at Google, now the CEO of Humu, they both say that now the majority of our time is spent at work. It's a little bit different now because we are working at home, but even when you work from home, there's longer hours that you're putting in because you don't have to have that commute. So what that means is it's so much more important. It's always been important, but it's so much more important today to focus on the satisfaction of your employees. And the reason I find it funny that organizations don't take this approach more often is because of the benefits that come along with it. So if, if an employee has job satisfaction, then they're more likely to be productive. But even more so, if the employee has life satisfaction, then they're more likely to have job satisfaction, which tailors into job performance. So if organizations focus on employees' happiness or psychological well-being, then the benefits that they're going to see are lower absenteeism. It's stated in research that, that employees who are not as satisfied or psychological well they miss 1.25 more days than somebody who is psychologically well. And that might not seem like a lot, but over a time frame in a, in a 365 calendar year, that's roughly 15 days. So many organizations don't even give two week vacations and that's three weeks, three working weeks. Then you multiply that by the number of employees who are psychologically uh, rated low and it starts to add up. So absenteeism is a billion dollar cost to organizations. And even in the smallest organizations, it can, it can go from 2 billion to 74 billion to the larger organizations. And even more so with employees who aren't psychologically well or satisfied they, the companies have higher turnover rates. And we all hear about this, I wanna lower turnover and this and that, but I feel like organizations miss out on what it actually takes to lower turnover. It's an investment in your employees. If you think about, if you think about an investment, what are you doing? You're investing in something that you think will turn a profit, and in this case, Whenever you invest in an employee, you're investing in an employee so they can produce, but at the same sense, you want them to become better, right? So in addition to that, I kind of have a controversial statement that I outlined in my thesis, which is organizations are not the only one to blame for job satisfaction and ultimately life satisfaction. The employee has to take responsibility for themselves. And I just finished working out and that's something that I do for myself. It doesn't help me in, in work as, as far as like the work that I have to do, 
but it it clears my my brain it helps my my mental capability it strengthens the part that i use at work and i feel like a lot of employees will look at the organization and say well they're not giving me this i've done this this and this for them and they're not giving me anything in return well i would even ask them what have you given to yourself have you taken the time to look at what is going to help you in that situation if you can't control other people control your actions and your responsibilities and your behaviors of yourself so work out read do the things that you have to do to feel better because of that correlation if your life is more satisfied then your job is going to be more satisfied and the, and the funny thing is is that nothing has to change structurally but it's all in here it's all in your mind and and, and even in the blog i mentioned that if if the if the mind if the brain is a muscle why don't you work it out we've all heard that before but it's the truth. I mean, if the brain is a muscle, you have to work it out or it's gonna be flabby in there, you know? It's not gonna serve its purpose to the full extent. So I know that this is a long video, but I was, I was thinking about the blog and, and, and how it can be truly adaptable into today's society and there's a lot of articles out there about how to manage your remote employees um, because a lot of times they want to be reached out to more and you have to be willing to create that environment for them so I wanted to jump on here say that and and hopefully give some insight to to the people out there who maybe feel overwhelmed with everything going on um, think about the things that you can do for yourself until we get to that point where organizations actually focus on employees and um, go from there. So I hope this is helpful. And if you if you like this content and you want to ask me questions, feel free to to shoot me a DM or a private message, and I'll be glad to reach out to you.